Jesus says, let me give you an insight into our honeymoon in heaven. May 12, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Claire began Tonight the Lord took me to heaven and our tour was very much like the narratives from the Chronicles of the Bride. It all began very innocently, as I saw the Lord dancing with me in a rather busy area. I was wondering, what is all this activity about? Well, I noticed his collar was unbuttoned and his tuxedo tie was loose around his neck. After a few more moments, I saw that his sleeves were rolled up and wondered why in the world would his sleeves be rolled up? I think he really delights in surprising me and making me guess about what he's up to. Well, then I saw he was wearing a kitchen apron. Just then, an angel without wings passed by with something that looked like a roasted chicken hot and steaming on a platter. I get it, he's helping to prepare the wedding supper. Well, he danced a bit more, and I just adored and worshipped him to the music. At times, he sang over me and spoke encouraging words. After a brief while, a helicopter landed nearby, and the Lord took me by the arm and helped me climb aboard. Before I knew it, we were airborne and headed to a large blimp-shaped ship that was hovering in the sky. The helicopter flew into a landing area in the back of the blimp and we jumped out. Then I saw the blimp-like ship begin to move slowly and then totally disappear into space. In the next scene, the Lord and I were on a beach beside the ocean. I was wearing pedal pushers capris and a blouse. The Lord was also wearing pedal pushers and a white shirt that hung loose and was very casual and comfortable. We were on our honeymoon. Wow! Very high, dark lava rock cliffs surrounded the cove we were walking in. The waves were coming in rather forcefully, but as soon as we got near the water, they melted down into placid lapping waves, as if to greet us and make our walk more quiet and calm. But not before the waves tossed up a brilliant pink conch shell right at my feet. The Lord looked at me, smiling, pick it up, as I did. Pearls began to roll out from inside, then emeralds and rubies, all of a deep color and skillfully faceted, revealing their clarity and deep colors. I was delighted and tossed them up in the air. Then I thought to myself, I should save these and share them with others. And as I thought that, they all picked themselves up off the sand and gathered again into the conch. He embraced me and danced with me right there on the beach and I thought to myself, this is the most romantic moment of my life. It's picture perfect. Soon we were sitting beside a stream of crystal clear water that fed into the ocean. Lush ferns lined the rocks as it descended. I don't remember what we were eating, but Jesus said to me, Oh, here comes trouble. Just then, my huge African male lion, Judah, came lumbering up the beach, just in time for lunch. We giggled as we fed him morsels. I looked behind me, and a large serving of meat looking food appeared catching Judah's fancy. He forgot about our picnic and had his own. Soon, Gracie, our Siamese colored mama cat, came meowing up to us for her share. 
Then our other cats, little Judah, an Abyssinian grey cat that had markings just like a mountain lion, came up to Big Judah, in his characteristic greeting, sniffed his mouth and nose very studiously. Big Judah, far from being antagonistic at this intrusion, greeted him with a gentle nudge. After we finished our lunch, I got up to put my feet in the water, and along came some natives running towards us down the beach. Oh, they gathered around us so joyfully, as if we were long-lost friends, fingering my hair and shirt with great curiosity and affection. They made it obvious they wanted to take me in a dugout canoe for a ride while Jesus sat on the beach. Soon we were moving swiftly along in the calm water and just really enjoying one another's company. Jesus soon came walking on the water to rescue his bride, whom he was very jealous over. He took me to a place a little further inland where the waters were crystal clear and calm. I stood on the ground and looked down into these pools of water that were teeming with exotic colorful fish in a background of white sand. Oh, they were amazing in colors, so brilliant. The Lord and I were soon swimming with them and he was showing me around this underwater wonderland. I remember a place just like this in the Yucatan in Mexico. It was a tourist destination and the fish were something to behold. I'd never seen anything like it. It was like an underwater aquarium with the most colorful fish he ever created all gathered together in looking glass water. The scene changed again and this time we were dancing on the deck of a cruise ship. The angels had put a blanket over the sky so it seemed like night time. A waiter came by and offered us some champagne. The Lord took a glass and handed it to me. Then he took his glass and said, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes and lifted his glass crossing my arm with his, so he drank from my glass and I drank from his. Then fireworks began to shoot off up into the sky. Beautiful! What a celebration of our love! He was so delighted to see me enthralled by this awesomely perfect event on our honeymoon. Oh, I wanted to stay there forever. After a few minutes, the Lord began to speak. We should talk. No, I want to stay here all night. Okay, Lord, if I don't write this all down now, won't I forget? Are you kidding me? As if Holy Spirit will forget. Here I am, Lord, all ears, no more tears. I should hope not. That was just a teensy, tiny glimpse into our wedding reception and honeymoon. Oh Lord, that should hold me for a long time. No, it won't. Be honest. You'll be back here before the night is out, wanting more. I know you too well. You're always right. What's the use of arguing? You'll do it anyway. Ooh, I'm too happy to be contentious. What would you like to talk about tonight? Our honeymoon? He smiled with a twinkle in his eye. Oh, that was truly ecstatically awesome.
Well, my brides, that is merely a glimpse into what it will be like once you are here in heaven with me. Oh Lord, I'm still floating on cloud nine with you. I can barely focus on writing this all down. So infused with joy am I. And that was merely a whiff of joy from your honeymoon. And I say to you, all my brides, I have a wonderful escape to paradise planned for you all. Oh, you have no idea. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard the wonders I have prepared for all of you in heaven. After the wedding supper, we will disappear into paradise and spend our days joyfully exploring the oceans, mountains, forests and streams of living water in heaven. Each of you has a very particular place that is in your dreams as a wonderful place to be. Understand, I know all about that place. I've been there and seen the things you love as well as read your minds as to what else you would love to see there, and I have down to the last detail prepared many places for you that we will frequent during our honeymoon. You will even meet people there who are longing to see you, as well as your favorite animals, my wedding presents to you. Everything on earth you ever dreamt of doing, we shall do together in heaven and these places shall be ours to return to, time and time again. They each are tailored exactly to your tastes. There are longings in each of your hearts to visit places you have seen in passing. In heaven those places are real, just for you. What joy will be yours as I answer all the questions you could ever have about creation? and you are able to observe its beauty microscopically just by desire. You will even be able to walk into tiny worlds and explore their patterns and composition. Nothing, absolutely nothing, will be impossible to you. Our honeymoon will be a whole year long as you and I experience one another together in an innocent and pure relationship. There will not be a care in the world for the entire time. It shall be nothing but a paradise and seemingly unending vacation. All this is necessary to adjust you to heaven and its joys. You will never exhaust all of them, but you certainly will have an entirely new reality and outlook on life. No more pain, no more fatigue, no more bills. Oh yes, you are going to love it. Everything necessary will be provided free of charge. Every discipline you have ever wanted to master will be given into your hands with barely an effort. Inner scars will be healed and you will be released into a new freedom unlike anything you've ever known. Beloveds, on this earth you have scars, wounds, broken and empty places, and you are truly war-torn. But in heaven, all of you will be restored. You will express creativity in everything you put your hands to. Parts of you that were suppressed on the earth will come into full bloom and spread their fragrance throughout the courts of heaven. Truly, the godlike nature given you at your creation will bloom and put out the most fragrant flowers and nourishing fruits. Your gifts will heal others as the anointing flows freely for the first time in your life. It will flow so freely it will reach to the furthest corners of heaven to heal and enhance all who are touched. Could there possibly be anything more wonderful, I say to you? No. Heaven is beyond wonderful. Heaven is all you've ever dreamt or wanted in your short life on earth. As you go, 
Through life, you think to yourself, I wish this and I wish that. And do you know your angel is recording all those things and bringing them to me? Oh yes, the angels serve in that capacity. It is my delight to see them involved in bringing you joy, and they themselves live to bring happiness to others. That, too, is their joy. So when you visit one of the marvelous places I've created for you, the things you thought about for decades, little fleeting thoughts of what you liked, all of that will be condensed into where you are visiting. For instance, if you saw a purple butterfly and marveled at its beauty but thought for a moment, I wish it had eyes on its wings. That thought has been recorded, and when you see that butterfly, it will have beautiful eyes on its wings. If you love red rocks and deep canyons with waterfalls and ferns, everything will be as if you painted it, but with all kinds of surprises, like clusters of wild asparagus and watercress, exotic flowers and playful odors frolicking in the water, and the stones throw away a doe and her fawn, feeding on vibrant green grass, and above her, your favorite cat, a mountain lion, lazily licking his paws and rolling over on his back, taking in the wild beauty. You will see the transformations that love permeating everything has made. The lion and the fawn will lie down next to one another, and he will tenderly embrace the fawn as they nap. The others will surface in the water with beautiful shells and drop them at your feet, begging to be petted. The bees will ascend in the shape of a heart and invite you to partake of their honey. The sand beneath you will gently accommodate your shape, wanting to make you comfortable. The canyon walls will have footholds and handles, making climbing effortless. And on your way up there will be surprises, like little caves lined with gem-quality indigo azurite crystals. Eagles will invite you to sit on their nests and fondle their chicks. The leaves on the trees will rustle joyfully as you pass by, and the grass will tinkle like chimes greeting you in love with sparkling prisms of light, glinting off of them and dancing off the canyon walls. Oh, the wonders of heaven never cease, and all shall be yours because on earth you lived for me. So now I will spend our eternity delighting you with things you never thought of, but are extensions of what enthralled you on earth. I could go on and on all night, Claire, but even now your eyelids are heavy. In heaven, that will never happen again, unless you want it to. I don't think I'll ever want to fight with that feeling again, Lord. Well, I wanted to share some of the wonders of heaven with all my brides, but I should mention there will also be quaint villages, such as the ones you admire so much in Greece. Cafes and even artwork will abound on the walls of little bistros. People who love to live in apartments will find such joy in their own specially designed home, with terraces and landscaping of the most colorful flowers and fountains of living waters. They will live in canyon-like groupings, so they can sit on their terraces and visit with one another. There are mindering canals planted with gardens and accented with quaint bridges, winding cobblestone streets, hidden gardens with lavender and white lilies clustered around intimate waterfalls and ornate but comfortable benches and swings. Oh, what I've planned for the city dwellers will be something out of this world. Lord, you don't do anything halfway. You are the most extravagant lover no one could ever love as you do. 
My bride hasn't the faintest idea of the wonders of heaven. She cannot conceive in her mind the extent I've gone to in preparing the ideal place just for her, to bring her endless joy. So I want you all to cherish these thoughts, my brides. I have gone to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you shall be as well. And I promise you, it's not just any place. It is a wonderland and work of art, created just for you. Take these dreams with you now, and prepare your hearts, for I'm coming for you soon. Hold fast to these things, treasure them in your heart. They will renew you with joy as you revisit them. For my heart has spared no detail to bring wonder and delight.